Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. Whoa! This is the greatest show! And now, here's your host, Clint Arthur. All right, all right, everybody. This is Clint Arthur, and welcome to the greatest show of all time, right here on 77 WABC Radio in New York City. And if you are an author, a speaker, a coach, a expert or entrepreneur of any kind, you should be celebrating. This is the place for you because we are dedicated to helping you be more and do more and have more so that you can be wanted and heard and seen and desired and paid all the money that you need to be paid for the excellent work that you do. Hey, I'm, you got to be a force for good. I know the things that I teach here and share with you here, the experts that we have coming to you on this program are very powerful forces of impact, influence, and income. So you got to be dedicated to doing, doing good things with what we teach you. And uh, my special guest today has really been the epitome of the American dream. She went from sharecropper's daughter to Surgeon General of the United States. And I'm so grateful to have you with me on the show today, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. Thanks for what you do. I am very fortunate in that all the people I get to interact with are change makers and people who have impact and influence on the world and change the world to their vision. My question for you is, did you have a vision of what your life would be like when you began your whole adventure, Dr. Elders? No. My life began in my hometown of 99 people. We were very, very poor. We lived in a three-bedroom, bed, three three-room, total room, shack, outdoor privies, well water. No, we didn't even have electricity. electricity. So I couldn't have imagined that we didn't have a radio. We didn't, you know, they didn't have TV. You know, what now you have to remember, I'm 86 years old, so uh, that was a few days ago. <laughs> but I, I think the thing you, you need to know that even in those days, we, we lived in a very poor rural farming community in Arkansas. And... I, you know, I couldn't even, I couldn't even dream. Uh, I, you know, we'd never seen, I'd never seen TV. So, you know, people often ask me, did I ever dream that I would be a doctor? At, well, they ask, I ever, ever dream to be a, a, a surgeon general? And my response is, you can't be what you can't see. So how could I dream of being I couldn't even dream of being a doctor. I'd never seen a doctor until I started college. How did you become what was invisible for you? What was unimaginable? What was, how did that all work out for you? You know, sometimes you just have to have a lot of, be in the right place at the right time and have a lot of dumb luck and take advantage of the opportunities when they come. I went to Belinda Smith College, which is a small, a black college in Little Rock, Arkansas. And they were offering scholarships to the top students in all of the small black schools. And, and, and I just happened to be the top student in my class. And my sisters and brothers had to pick cotton to get enough money to, uh, to raise my bus fare to go to Little Rock, to Little Rock, Arkansas, and the cost of bus fare at that time, you can give you an idea that about the time, was three dollars and forty three cents. I still remember. So it takes a village, doesn't it? It truly takes a village. So it was a very, it, it was a very long, difficult road, and my, I remember my sisters and brothers. At Pete Cotton all day, at four of them, to, and they were all, you know, taking as much as they could. And so they they asked my little brother, who was five years old at the time, and it was he looked up at me in his big eyes. I I can still see them clearly. 
he wanted to know. He says, do we have enough yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I looked down at, at my little brother, and I want you to know, at that moment in my life, in my lifetime, looking down at him, I said, if I ever get out of the cotton patch, I want you know, I'm going to do everything I can for any of my sisters and brothers who want to work to get out of the cotton patch. And I want you to know, I've done that. How, how have they done? I mean, how many brothers and sisters do you have? And did they, I, I mean, they didn't become the Surgeon General like you, but did they go on to lead successful, I impactful my lives? And, brothers, and let, me, let me tell you about my, I, 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 I have to brag on them because I was, I was the oldest. So I was always the mother hen, if you will. But I had, I, I have a brother who became a veterinarian, a sister who was a professor at Howard University, a sister was in human resources at the Ford Motor Company, a General Motors, excuse me, another sister who worked, I want a brother, a second brother who was, I won't say he was handicapped, but he didn't read well, he couldn't read. He had dyslexia. Well, we didn't know what dyslexia meant at that, you know, back in those days. What it meant. But I want, my, want you to know my brother worked for General Motors for 53 years Doc and missed three days of work. Dr. Elders, how do you account for so much success for your family when not every family with your background ha can say the same thing? What was the real thing that made your brothers and sisters and you be so successful? What was it? When I think about it, you know, we had... A parent, my parents only had an eighth grade education. They uh, they did the very best. They knew how. I always thought that they were good parents. So I thought we had good parents. And let me tell you what my mother instilled in all all seven of the eight of us. Four things that if you would take any of my sisters and brothers and ask them different, she always she always said, "You've got to." If you want to get out of the cotton patch, you've got to get something in your head. Well, she was thinking a good education. But see, my, my mother was graduating from high school with a good education. The other thing she always said, she said, always tell the truth. Today you cease to tell the truth and begin to lie is the day you begin to die. And so she, and she felt very strongly about that. And the other thing, the thing that she... She says, always do your best. She says, it may not be as good as some other people can do, but it's the best that you can do. And know that you've done your best, you know, and, and that it really is your best. And so so those are the kinds of principles that, you know, as I said, she only had an eighth grade education, but that was what she motivated, kept us thinking, but they kept us going. Now you learned a lot from your parents you also served as Surgeon General of the United States under President Bill Clinton. I met Bill Clinton yeah. a few years ago when he yeah. was he and his wife were at the commencement for my daughter's graduation. I thought he was yeah. an incredibly charming and charismatic person. What was the big thing that you learned from working with President Bill Clinton? Oh, you know, I thought President Bill Clinton was one of the smartest people that I had ever known. He was a poly every bone in his body was a political one. He was a politician from his heart. He listened. He knew how to listen. You know, if you ever met him once, he, he always rem remembered you. You know, like, and when he was talking with you or you interacting with him, he made you feel like you were the only person in the world and that he remembered that. And the other, the other thing is I, I really, I always felt that Bill Clinton was very, yeah, you know, he, you know, he got, a, I, I won't say a bad rap, but uh, he, I, I thought he was, I just felt that he was very honest, sincere, considered people, and even being a Southern white gentleman you know, from Arkansas, I felt that he always respected and treated all people with the utmost respect sincerity and kindness and was always out there promoting 
their success and wanting them to be their best. My guest today is Dr. Jocelyn Elder. She's the former Surgeon General of the United States. When we come back from the break, we are going to talk to Dr. Elders and hear about her career as an author and a speaker. And I'm going to ask her my favorite question, what is the most important thing she ever learned? Stay tuned right here on The Greatest Show of All Time, 77 WABC Radio. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, it is my favorite time of the show. This is the section of the show where we bring in our home repair expert, Mr. Tony Silva, CEO of HomeRepair.com. And you have got some more great stuff every week. What are we talking about this week, Tony? This week, Clint, it's a very special week. It's National Lightning Safety Awareness Week. Like, what is that? Yeah, exactly. You know, this started back in 2001 and they've seen, you know, lightning strike deaths and, you know, drop by 40%. And it's not really something you think about until you hear the rumble of the thunder and the lights are flashing. Maybe the power goes out, the windows shake, but this is actually a real big deal, right? And being safe and knowing what to do and what not to do and how to protect your home from lightning strike. That's a big deal. We're in that season. It's spring and the thunderstorms are here. Hey, man, I'm always thinking about lightning because I am a huge fan of my mentor, Benjamin Franklin. You know, I graduated from the Wharton Business School. University of Pennsylvania was founded by Benjamin Franklin. And did you know that Benjamin Franklin was a stoner? Did you know that? I did not know that. That guy, I mean, you think about... Who else is going to go out in a lightning storm flying a kite? <laughs> He's got to be stoned off his ass. Got to be. I'm telling you. And <laughs> I can just see, I can just, you know, after that, did you know that Benjamin Franklin invented the urinary catheter? I can I just know. imagine Ben Franklin sitting in his living room. <laughs> I do believe something could go up there. <laughs> uh, You know, but anyway, let's go back to lightning preparedness and safety. So lightning preparedness, safety, right. You know, um, here's some really interesting facts that you might not have known, all right? If you are inside a home that has plumbing and electrical, that is a safe shelter. If you are in your woodshed or a dugout, that is not a safe structure. The key here is, is how the lightning actually gets grounded. So if you're looking for shelter, you're going to want to go into a building that has electricity and plumbing. Those are key factors because another thing that people don't necessarily know is that the lightning strike, the electricity, it runs through the, the metal, the, 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 it runs through the rebar in the concrete, in the floors and the walls. That's why when there's a lightning storm, you don't want to lay on the floor. You don't want to lean up against a concrete wall because those concrete walls and that concrete floor, it has rebar and it has steel and they will electrify. So, you know, move. That's why I say move to an inner room and don't touch anything metallic. Don't touch the faucets. Stay off your phone if it's corded. Um, Stay away from anything that can it can carry electricity. You know, the thing about a thunderstorm is they blow through in a few minutes. So during that time. Just, you know, keep your hands off anything metal. Don't lean up against any walls and stay off the floor. And okay. make sure you're in a building that has, you know, adequate or has electricity and plumbing in it. Okay. Now, if I'm in a concrete building that's got a lot of concrete, is it okay to just sit on a couch? Is that enough insulation? It is okay. It is okay. You know, you want to, you want to make sure that the couch is not like next to a window, Right. But that's okay. The key is you just don't want to lean up against the walls or, you know, lay down on the floor because you are, um, you're just creating an easier way for that electricity to get into your body, right? Cool. And Um, the last parts of this is, you know, it's really important not only for your own safety and your own protection, but how do you protect your house? And a couple of really quick good tips are make sure that you're, vital electronic equipment is connected to a surge protector. You know, those things are like 10 or 15 bucks. It's okay to let those things blow up, but don't blow up your $3,000 Mac, right? (laughs) (laughs) And 
you know, if you do have a home, if you're not a city dweller, if you're, you live in the rural area, you can also have lightning rods mounted on your on your roof and it grounds properly. It doesn't prevent your house from getting struck, but what it does is it forces the lightning to dissipate and go to the ground rather than fry your house. Ooh, yeah. And then it would like they put those rods to ground you right into the earth. Ugh. Right. Right. I mean, think about when you think about how much power is in a bolt of electricity, man. That would did you ever see the one where the guy gets hit by elect? It's like a video on Facebook and he gets hit by electricity and gets up and stumbles and gets hit by electricity again. Did you ever see that one? I have not, but that is double <laughs> unlucky right there. I mean, double unlucky <laughs> Asian guy. These poor Asian guys on Facebook videos, they're always getting <laughs> up like nobody's business. Hey folks, if you got, if your house got hit by lightning and now you need to rebuild, or if you've been caught in a storm and hail beat up your roof, or if you're gonna build an addition or remodel your kitchen, homerepair.com is the home of Tony Silva. And what's the phone number for the people to call, Tony? 877-RED-HOUSE. All right, Tony will be back with us next week with more Home Repair Genius right here on The Greatest Show of All Time, 77 WABC Radio in New York City. Thanks, Tony. Great, we'll see you next week. All right, we are back with former Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. Dr. Elders, uh, do you think it's important for experts to write a book? And why did you write your book from sharecropper's daughter to Surgeon General of the United States? Why'd you write that book? Uh, I, I do think it's important for uh, authors to share their past experience. And I wrote that book too. I think to let young black people, especially women, girls from the Delta, to know that they can succeed and they can do whatever they wanted to do. And if they, all they had to do was look at my life, some of my troubles and hardships, and to re realize that they, if they just have to be persistent and keep moving forward. Fantastic. And do you think that writing your book made you better? Think about where I came from, and I had never thought about it before. I just thought what I had accomplished was kind of what ordinary and what everybody had done. But as I thought about it and went through, you know, I thought of some of the hardships and some of the things that I overcome, some of the fortunes that I had and misfortunes too. And I felt very blessed. And I thought it was important to have young people know that it was very important to set a goal and keep their eye on the press and never, never, never give up. Now, since leaving public service, you've had a very successful career as a motivational, inspirational public speaker. What's been the most important tool for your success as a professional speaker? As a professional speaker, I felt one of the most important tools that I had is to know my audience. You know, sometimes I was speaking to, you know, high level professionals. Other times I was speaking to high schoolers and you might put out almost the same message, but it's how you prepare, how you give that message. You know, and so I really felt that I had, I learned to identify my audience to prepare for the audience that I was speaking with and make sure that I connected, or, or that you know, at least I tried very hard to connect with whatever audience that I was uh, speaking with. And then I decided, I decided very early that I was de deciding whatever my talk was, you know, people often tell you what they want you to talk about, but I, I tried to decide what are the points I might want to make, what do I want to tell them, and what do I want to make sure that I've told them what I said I was going to, going to tell them? Have you uh, leveraged your celebrity or fame into having more impact, influence, and income? Or do you have any tricks that you might share with other up-and-coming speakers and authors about how to get more fame or how to leverage whatever fame you have? I'm not sure I, I know that. I, I was very fortunate in uh, being able to select or be selected by our speakers bureau which really worked very hard 
and they selected often the right audience for me to speak with. You know, they selected, you know, the right kinds of audiences, whether it be the medical audiences, a college student audiences, nurses, whatever. And, and they made sure that they gave me as much information, get as much information as you can about your audience so that you deliver the kind of address that they are wanting in the language that they can understand be able to communicate and and meet and feel your audience. And I felt that that was very important for me. Fantastic. What's the most important thing you ever learned? Surgeon General of the USA, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. What do you, what do you think it is? I feel that if I'm going to go out and try and lead a group, the first thing, I had to learn what they wanted and learn what they needed. And, and in order to do that, I had to listen to them. And then I had to go back and communicate it to them. I felt that, you know, you can't teach what you don't know. And you can't leave where you won't go. So I felt that I had to really be able to know my audience if I wanted to lead them to where and to get accomplished what I felt was important to get accomplished. So in order to do that, I had to be clear about my own goals, know what they were know how to and and know how, know how to achieve them and i made to make sure that i was prepared you know prepared and you have to be consistent and be persistent great who have been some of the mentors or inspirational guiding lights of your career dr others well obviously the my, probably them everybody will all say you know my mother was a probably a grandmother was probably the greatest guiding light but the person who really was my mentor and who made me more than just a, a college graduate was Dr. Ed Hughes. He was from New Mexico, a very rash, harsh Westerner who, when I became his fellow, he said, he said, yesterday you were just a woman doctor. He said, today you are a fellow. And he worked hard to make sure that I was always at the top. Hang on, because, excuse me, I can, uh, Alicia, don't put Oprah in there. <laughs> don't set out the Oprah and Pepper in, the, in there. We don't put those down there. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. I, I, I. I'm doing two or three things. I get it. I get it. Hey, look, uh, you are a fascinating person. And if if you have been fascinated by this interview, you could get more of Dr. Jocelyn Elder. She'll be appearing at my Instant Marketing Miracle event at CNN Center in Atlanta, August 7, 8, and 9. And not just Dr. Elder, she'll be there with Dr. Oz, Dr. Drew, celebrity chef Paula Dean. The Real Patch Adams, who inspired the movie starring Robin Williams, and NASA astronaut Mike Massimino, who you heard on this program a couple of weeks ago, as well as MMA gold medal world champion fighter Janae Noonan. That's right, a female gold medal MMA fighter and celebrity dentist Dr. Catrice Austin will also be there and more. Go If you want to get your ticket, go to www. IMM20.com, Instant Marketing Miracle 2020. I shortened it to www.IMM20.com. One last question for you, Dr. Elder, is about this. Okay. We have the COVID pandemic going on right now, and uh, a lot of people are concerned about going to live events, and yet you're going to be coming to this event. And yeah. uh, how do you feel like? How do you feel? Do you feel like you're going to be safe coming to an event like this? Yes, you know, I feel that uh, yeah, this, uh, this COVID-19 virus has changed the way we think the world thinks about health. And I think that we all have changed how we respond. Without question, we probably all doing we've done more hand washing than we probably ever did before. More people are wearing masks, and, and I certainly will be wear wear my mask. And I'll try to make sure I do safe distancing. I have I used to shake everybody's hand. Now I shake 
you know, nobody's hand, and it isn't that I don't want to, but I think the world has changed how we respond. And I think we, we all still feel very strongly about um, we love and respect each other, and we all want to be successful, but we all also want to make sure that we're all safe. Amen to that. I look forward to seeing you in Atlanta, Dr. Elders. Thanks so much for taking your time to be with us here on 77 WABC Radio in New York City with the greatest show of all time. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. I am so excited to learn more from the Surgeon General of the United States, Dr. Jocelyn Elders. What an amazing woman. I, You know, you got to give a person credit when they're in their 80s and they're out there working, making a buck as a speaker. Hey, I'm excited to hear what she's got to say when I get her in person. You know, in-person interviews are very different than phoners. And I am positive that Jocelyn and I are going to have an amazing time for all of you in Atlanta at the CNN Center. And then I've got Patch Adams. He'll be a guest on this show in the weeks coming up. He's another person fascinating person you know they keep telling me are you sure you want patch adams he's uh he's a very um unpredictable speaker he is liable to launch into all kinds of unexpected talks about things that you're not really expecting i'm like i i can handle patch adams i'm telling you it's going to be interesting to see what happens with patch adams and then dr drew another superstar the guy is on television every single freaking week in Los Angeles. I know he's a guest on Fox LA every week. And then of course, my superstar, the guy I have paid a ton of money, Dr. Mehmet Oz, host of the Dr. Oz Show. He'll be there sharing his secrets of not only how to get on his show, but also how to have more impact and influence as an expert. And that's really what this is all about. And then we have a new superstar guest, Paula Dean will be at the event. Yes, she'll be talking about how to be a wonderful host, Southern hospitality, and she'll be hosting our Down Home Southern Barbecue on Saturday night to celebrate. So if you have not yet got your tickets, get them while you can. We are limiting the attendance to only 200 people. We have less than 40 seats left. And if you wanna get in on all this goodness and marketing power, Go to www.immm20.com, immm20.com, instantmarketingmiracle20.com, and immm20.com. You know, my book, Celebrity Entrepreneurship, is available on Amazon.com. Check it out, Celebrity Entrepreneurship. Until next week, I am Clint Arthur. Thank you so much for listening. Tune in every Sunday night right here on 77 WABC Radio in New York City. 9.30 p.m. Sunday nights for the greatest show of all time. The greatest show of all time.